Hello and welcome to the Power On channel. In this week's episode I'm going to take you through this manufacturing jig that I've got here. I brought it home to finish off the programming which is based on a, an Arduino Micro which is in this control box underneath here. But I thought you just might be interested in seeing something which is um, not a project of mine but at, uh, a project at work. Now this rig is for the curing of a UV glue, that's an ultraviolet cured glue. We've got the UV curing lamp controller here which is a Panasonic unit and mounted up here we've got two wands, uh, each with its own LED in the end here. This is actually mounted on a stage here which will travel in this Z direxis, uh, Z axis rather and the actual piece which is requiring to be uh, cured is actually going to be placed on this platen here and can move in the X axis. So without sort of going on more about it, let me just press the start button and you'll see what I mean. First of all this X axis moves the piece part into position. The reason I've done that is so that the piece part can be easily put in without fouling any of the equipment up here. The second part is to bring the heads down. Now normally the, this cover would be in place also over the piece part to stop the UV spreading around the uh, manufacturing area. You can see that the UV LED has actually come on. Uh, I've only got the UV LED set on 1% uh, for testing purposes so uh, normally that would be very very intense and very very bright. And all it does is it moves in this X plane. At the moment it's moving very slowly um, to my right and I can change those speeds and feeds and what have you depending on the curing regime that the process operator wants to use. Now why is this important? Well uh, in terms of UV curing and glues and glues in general or any joint in general really if you think of a joint between two metals say a welder would want to tack the weld in particular locations to stop the metal deforming well the same sort of principles apply to glues also in that you can over cure one section of the glue before another part of the glue becomes cured so it's a good idea to make sure that the UV exposure is very even or at least controlled in a manner to which you know gives you a good joint. So there we have it, a fairly simple process really. All we're doing is moving the piece part in the X-plane underneath the UV LEDs and exposing them for a particular length of time at a particular intensity. Just a bit of a note on the stages, both this linear stage on the X and on the Z here. They're from a company called Suruga, a Japanese company, and I think they're actually a subsidiary of uh, Mizumi these days. They've both got oriental motors on the back of them, and really for this project they are overkill. The accuracy of these stages is, is way, way beyond what we actually need for this sort of application, but we have a number of these at the manufacturing plant which were not being used and so it seemed appropriate to use existing equipment rather than buying something. Yeah, indeed these, these stages in terms of their movement can be got down to sort of sub-micron level so, and that's 1 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, meters. So, uh, so yeah, well, well overkill for what we need here. Anyway, let's uh, have a look inside the box and how we are controlling these one, two, three devices. So here we are inside the panel and first of all I'll make my excuses for the rather sort of uh, bird's nest uh, uh, wiring. I have been asked to put this rig together quite quickly so I cobbled it together from a box that was already constructed for a previous project. I ripped out all the bits that I didn't need and I put in the bits that I do need. So what have we got inside the box? We've got our mains here on the right hand side and we've got a little transformer here which gives me 24 volts which I need for the motor drivers and 5 volts which I need for the Arduino. There is also 12 volts on here but I'm not using it. So yes in the middle we've got the heart of the device or the brain of the device if you like and just, uh, just a, simply an Arduino Uno clone. On the left hand side here we've got the two motor drivers and as I said the five phase stepping motor drivers 
and these are the ones that are available from Oriental Motor. You can see the five wires here going out to the five phases of the motor. That's a black, green, blue, orange and red. And in terms of control, uh, it's very easy from an Arduino to control these drivers. All you have to provide is um, the number of steps, which is on this first pair of wires here, and the direction that you require it to go in, whether it be forward or reverse, or clockwise or counterclockwise, it's called. So yes, with these four wires, I'm driving one driver, and these four wires are driving the other driver. The rest, um, we have just simple control of the Panasonic UV unit, which is just here on the left-hand side. And the way that I'm controlling that is uh, with an on and an off signal. So I'm actually uh, directing the signal to switch on and then giving it the signal to switch off. You can alternatively uh, get it to time out, but uh, I'm directly controlling it. Uh, and that's about it inside the box. Not really uh, much else to say. So we'll just spend a couple of minutes and we'll look at the software side of things. So here we are on the desktop and I've got a copy of the Arduino IDE open and I've opened the program that I've actually written for this rig. I'm going to assume that you know Arduino programming reasonably well or C++ programming reasonably well because I'm not going to go into the detail. That really would be, uh, it would take hours to go through this step by step. Just looking at the program though, I always like to put a description at the top here. And uh, yes, this is uh, curing for this particular rig. Includes two axis drivers for Saruga five pole drives, one for the X and one for the Z. We've included a start button, which is on pin 12. And we've included a trigger for the Panasonic UV. That's basically an enable pin and a start stop pin. Further down here, we've just got the actual declarations themselves. So for example, we have this byte here, which sets the direction of the Z slide or the Z transition. And here we've got the step of the Z transition and the respective pin number, pin number eight in this case. Moving on to the setup, we open a serial port, always good to have a serial port open where we can put diagnostic messages, such as this first one here, saying that we're actually starting the program up. And then we set the various inputs and output pins. Finally, before we move into the loop, we home both the axes. We home the Z axis first to make sure that out of the way vertically before moving the X axis. We then remove the inhibit on the Panasonic by setting that high. That basically prepares the unit so that we can switch it on and off. Now before I go through the loop, I'll just go below the loop and look at the number of subroutines or functions that I've written. I've written two for each axis. One is a slow one, as I'm highlighting there, and this is drive Z slowly. The other one here is drive Z fast. Similarly, we drive X slow and we drive X fast. They're all the same, except they apply to different axes and they will result in different speeds. All I'm doing here in terms of making the drives to work is telling the drive which direction to go in. And then I am looping around this particular short loop for loop here and switching the stepping pin high and then low with a very short delay measured in microseconds. Below this there are two other subroutines and these are the two homing axis subroutines which are very similar to these except we're looking to see the flag for the limit switch. And so basically what the drive does is it moves as fast as it can towards the limit switch and as soon as it sees the limit switch it backs off very slowly step 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 until it comes off that switch. So a very simple routine to do the homing. Moving back up to the loop 
this first section here is all about listening out for the starting, uh, or rather the pressing of the start button. And I've added some debouncing in there just to make sure that we don't get any false positives. We then use these two commands here to move the, uh, the X and the Z fast into position. And then we trigger the Panasonic unit to switch on which is just a momentary press of this Panasonic on button. And then, and this is yet to be finalized really, but I'm just moving it fast in the X and then fast, uh, sorry, slow in the X direction, just backwards and forwards over the same area. And then triggering off the Panasonic and then rehoming the axes. Quite simple, nothing very frilly going on uh, but uh, hopefully enough to make a very consistent process. Anyway, that's about it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed this quick peek at some work that I do outside my hobbies at home. So, if you've enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't, give me a thumbs down. See if I care. Ta-ta for now.